Those who are about to die salute you. Spartacus has to be one of the top 10 features in our library. It's a film of tremendous scope. Um, it is a film that deals with themes of slavery and oppression. And at the time that it was produced in the late 50s and released in 1960, uh, obviously those were themes that were very uh, important uh, in this country and to this country's history. I'd rather be here, a free man among brothers, facing a long march and a hard fight and to be the richest citizen of Rome. Spartacus was a very important movie, and it makes a statement about what one small group of people can try and do. And I, I really think that that spoke to the audiences in the early 60s, and it made a difference. When just one man says, no, I won't, Rome begins to fear. And we were tens of thousands who said no. When I first heard about the restoration of Spartacus, I was pretty excited because I'd worked on Blu-ray versions prior, and I knew they were going to go back in and really do some great work with it. This is an opportunity to present the film with a new scan from the original negative. Up to this point, it was thought that the original negative was beyond use. We are going back to the film elements. They are in kind of rough condition, 1960s. They were cut at different times from each other, so in cases they don't match. The film was edited in the 60s to remove some battle sequences that were a little too realistic uh, and to remove some material that at the time was thought to be questionable. Do you eat oysters? When I have them, Master. Do you eat snails? No, Master. Spartacus was shot in 35 millimeter Technorama. This differs from traditional 35 millimeter film formats in that the image is exposed horizontally on the film, enabling an image that is basically twice as wide as one that would be in a traditional 35 millimeter film format. We start with a scan, high resolution on the Northlight scanner. The Northlight scans at 6K resolution and then outputs a signal at 4K resolution, and then our workflow is 4K throughout the restoration. We really have two main functions in, in restoration, and that is repairing any damage that has occurred or any uh, reversing the effects of aging, and at the same time, uh, staying true to what the filmmakers wanted uh, to present to the audience. We've brought Bob Harris on as a consultant to help us with this particular restoration. Robert Harris and his partner Jim Katz in the 1990 restoration of the film did work directly with Stanley Kubrick to get notes and his input on what the color of the film should be. That was done photochemically. This is an opportunity now to take that work and apply the best technology that exists today. My job as a restoration audio mixer is to really find the pure sound and then just get out of the way of it. It's much like a painting. There's a patina on there. You want to, you want to scrape the patina off, but not any of the color. The story of this soundtrack's history is pretty interesting. And in Universal's catalog, there's not a whole lot of discrete stereo releases. And this was a 70 mil, you know, six track format, which is five screen channels across the front and a monaural surround channel. The big restoration in 91 had a theatrical release of the same format. However, that consumer home video did not get to experience that mix. So for the, the current restoration, not only did we create a 5.1, we also created a 7.1. So in this case, we had a mono surround back from 1960, taking that into stereo and quadraphonic, so a total of eight screen, uh, total channels for the 7.1. There are a lot of people involved. There are a lot of facility resources involved. I personally think it's, it's fantastic to work for a company like Universal that cares enough about the content to create a facility like this to give this film its due. The scale of this project is, is immense. We are on 13 different reels at any given time. You can walk into any room in this building and someone has an image of Spartacus on the screen. In one room, there may be editorial work going on. In another room, there may be scratch removal. In another room, there may be color correction. The color correction process is what we use to even out the color between scenes. When a motion picture is shot, it's shot over many weeks and months. 
they could start shooting at two o'clock in the afternoon and finish shooting at five o'clock in the afternoon and the light's going to be different. So we use our color correction tools to make it look seamless, like it was all shot at the same time of the day. The original negative in this case had started to fade and what happens when a, a negative fades is that the blue color usually fades first. So as a protection against that, the studios would shoot three black and white layers that were representative of each color piece of the film. So you have a black and white record that represents red, green, and blue primary colors. Those elements can be recombined and thereby reproduce faithfully the colors that existed in the original negative. In one sequence, the negative tore. And that was sort of interesting because you put all three layers together and now you have this big green splotch through the frame and you're just like, how did that happen? Adding color from the separation elements does present another problem though. As you digitally combine the images, sometimes they don't line up exactly. This can result in having color fringes. So if you're looking at an actor's shoulder or um, in profile the edge of their nose or something like that, you will see there is a little blue fringe there. The digital tools that we have at our disposal today can manipulate various aspects of the image so that the image can be recombined in such a way that you do not see that there are separate elements that are building the image. One of the big problems that we face is the dirt and scratches on the frame, in some cases running through an entire sequence, even reels. Mostly we do hand cleaning. We use pixels from before the frame that's got the problem or from after the frame that has the problem, or in some cases they use the pixels from just nearby in the same image. The end goal will be to shoot out a digital negative and have it be a backup for this film for the next hundred years. I do know that we're brothers, and I know that we're free. The team that we have here isn't just a series of technicians, they're artists. They're artists that have a passion for this sort of work, and their work passes this legacy on to generations to come. When the Blu-ray comes out, I think audiences are going to be just completely struck by the picture first off, and then maybe a reel or two in, they're going to go, this sounds really amazing. I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus. I hope that the audience, when they see this on their Blu-ray, are able to just focus on the movie, because Everything that we do is to remove the distractions. It probably hasn't looked this good since it was first screened, and uh, I dare say it probably looks better. Because of the work we've done here and the passion that goes into a project like this, my children or my grandchildren will be able to experience this film in the way that Stanley Kubrick and, and Kirk Douglas intended. I love you, Spartacus, as I loved my own father. I love you like my son that I'll never see. <laughs>